How's it going everybody? We are on to the next part of Buckins 922 project. Uh, those of you that are new to the channel, welcome. I built a 57cc home light for my buddy Buckin. Uh, what? I don't even know how long ago, a year and a half ago. The thing was an absolute monster. So what we're trying to do in this project is make a 77cc home light do the same thing. Um, I've never ported one of these and I'm super curious to see what's going to happen. Now in the last video, I ported these transfers, uh, made them pretty ginormous and, and ported them within the confines of this case. Now I noticed that the case on this model of saw really blocks the transfer. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you guys how I I trench cases or case match or whatever you want to call it um, the easy way and and the way that can give you quick success and and make things match up nicely so I'll bring you guys into the bench and let's let's make a pattern of these transfers now and then we can we can transfer that pattern onto the cases and see how much material we need to remove I'm excited let's do this okay here's our cases in the last video, I figured out that these cases are really blocked. Now, I marked exhaust on this, okay? It goes this way. Sorry, this way, friends. Okay, on the last video. Okay, we have a rough template of where the edge of the case is. Now, what I'm going to do with this is I need to put this onto the cylinder and line everything up. Okay, so... We're going to make a pattern based off of our transfers that we ported and line everything up with the case. So I'll move the case over right now. Okay, so we know that this went that way and the cylinder goes on like that. So I'm just going to lay this down on the case, okay? Okay, so all I've done here, I just I put four screws through there so that it doesn't move around. Now, once again, I'm going to take my dirty finger and just rub on here, okay? And what that'll do is that'll give me a precise pattern of what needs to be removed. Okay, and I'll do the other side. I like to do things old school. This is a kind of an old school sheet metal workers trick it works really well okay push really hard okay now I'll pull these screws off now I'm not sure if you guys can see see that so that's what I need to cut out. Okay, let's lay this on and see how bad it is. It's pretty bad. Remember, this is after porting. Stock, it's not quite this bad, but it's still pretty bad. Wow, look at that. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to use my marker and trace these lines. Okay, and this will give us a pretty perfect matchup when we put the cylinder on. Wow, that's a lot. Now, the one hold up is how much gasket surface do we have? Okay, I'm going to pull this off. Let's see. Tons of gasket surface left. So, that's what we're going to need to do. Pretty interesting. Um, I will go in with my scope and make sure they match up, but that'll give me a pretty, a pretty close uh, estimate of where I'm in a trench. Okay, and I may take some material out in here. Okay. Interesting though. So stock, these were blocked about half of that. So I don't know why Homelite did that. I have my suspicions. Friends, home lights run really hot. Um, just the design of them. They have their cooling issues. And that's why if you're going to port these, um, 
do your best to keep it cool because they seem to run really hot ported. So those of you that have ported these maybe have uh, discovered that. Yeah, so I'm going to go in here and round these corners and uh, same way that I port the lower transfers. I'm going to start at the edge and work my way in. Again, lots of ceiling area, so be aware. You don't want to keep things too thin here and here because you'll end up with an air leak. And then you'll have a saw that just doesn't run. So, um, pretty interesting stuff. And if I look down through, I can actually see where the marker is. Pretty interesting. I'm going to see if I can get you guys a shot of that uh, with the scope. Did you guys see that, how blocked they are? Uh, pretty interesting. I'm not sure why they did that. Probably to lower airflow and keep the RPM of the saw down would be my guess, but just a hunch. Okay, so I'm gonna go in here now with my good old Fordham and I'm gonna start shaping these cases to get them to match uh, to the lower transfers that we made. This is going to be a little bit tricky. I might have to figure out a way to prop this up. Yeah, I'll probably do them like this. Kind of up. So I'll find something to set this case on. And uh, let's rock and roll. Okay, I got you guys set up. Hopefully I can get this on film. Um, I have the crank seal blocked. Let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually sit on an angle here. I want you guys to be able to see this. Um, I've never put any of this kind of stuff on my channel. I don't always do this, but um, when I feel it's necessary, this is one of the moves I do. Now these cases are really soft, so I am uh, i don't have to go at super high speed. I don't want to slip and put a gouge in the case or... Now again, make sure there's enough material on the back side. Um, our fuel tank goes down and around and the inside of this is actually like a separate piece. So be mindful. I can't go in here and hog out tons of material because I don't want to weaken the case and I don't want to blow a hole through. I'd have to JB weld it or get it welded up. So. Yeah, I'm just really taking my time. Um, you guys can see the studs right there, so I'm just trying to get in the right angle. And trying not to block you guys so you guys can see. These cases are really soft, so I don't have to <laughs> I don't have to cut very much or at very high of a speed. I could probably do this with a sanding drum, friends. Just 
digging this corner out. Okay, so I'm pretty much up to my line. Okay, now I'm just gonna bring it back in. Trying to get it to be a straight transition in here. Okay, I'm just trying to keep this transition as smooth as possible without taking out too much material. This is a this is a little bit of a balancing act in this saw. See that? Nice smooth pass, path now out of the bottom end. There's this hump here. I'm going to have a look-see at the crank and make sure that if I want to take that out, that I can do so. I don't see that being an issue if I if I round it a little bit. Okay, so see what we've done there? i got to clean this corner up a little bit and get rid of this little bit of block, and then we're in business. So now I'll do the other one. I'll get it started here with you guys on video and then I'll jump back in. There's just a little corner here I want to clean up. Again, this is super fine work. You got to be careful, see how it, it ground up the corner there? Not a big deal, I can smooth that back out. Okay, now I'm going to go in and do the next one. Again, this is a little fumbly to hold your hand here, but it's uh, it's doable. Again, I'm bringing it right up to my line, and then I can get rid of this hump that's in here. I like to get the I like to get the finicky stuff done first. Okay, now you can see. You guys can see there's a little ridge right here. Okay, now I'm just gonna bring my tool in there and cut it back. Okay, and again, I'm looking to see if there's if there's any chance of me going through, and it looks like I should be okay. So, again, I've never done this before, so this is the fun. It's the exploring.
Okay, now I'm gonna go in here and trench these down into the crankcase. Okay. Stock. Tin manized. Okay, made a nice path for it to flow. This is just roughed in. I'm gonna clean it up now with a uh, with a sanding drum. I'll show you guys that when it's done. Well, you can call this case matching, trenching, whatever you want to call it, friends. But that's what it is. See, I call this trenching because I trenched into the case to feed them transfers. There we go. Okay, I got rid of some sharp edges. Just made it look like I think it should look. Whether it'll work or not, who knows. Now I'm going to go in and do the other side and then I'll show you guys the finished cases. This is fun. I'm having a blast today. Well, here's what we got going on. There's a few little nooks and crannies that I want to get out in there, but I think we're good for right now. This thing's probably going to flow some air, I reckon. Okay, I'll, I'll show you guys a look inside the machine. Because you can actually see through the side on this saw. You see that? Boom, straight in, no lip. There you go, there's a good shot. Okay, a lot of work to do this, but totally worth it. I love doing stuff like this. This is like building an old muscle car. Um, it takes as long as it takes, and uh, I'm, I, I like these kind of projects. I don't, I don't enjoy doing the new saws as much because you get them, they're usually running, they're in good shape. I can take the top end off, time it, port it, slap it back together, and it, you know, it's an, it's an animal. But stuff like this, there's so much working against you, old parts, um, bearing issues, heavy rotating assemblies, heavy pistons, um, the ignition timing can be a problem. We have reeds in this saw, but uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm real happy. The chips were just flying today and everything felt good. My hands are good today. Uh, I want to thank my wife for these reading glasses. It, it was time, friends. I just turned 40 and I need... I need reading glasses now. It was getting to the point, a half an hour grinding, and I was getting a headache. My eyes were going buggy, and I couldn't see. But uh, it's part of the journey, right, friends? We're, we're, all, we're all aging all the time, and uh, getting older is just part of the journey. It's part of my journey and yours, so I'm not fighting it. Um, I still got all the color in my beard, or most of it. I still got all my hair and most of the color, so I'm doing good. Anyhow, friends, uh, I'm going to clean up for the day. I'm going to do a little bit more smoothing on this thing. And uh, we're getting to the point that assembly will start taking place. Um, I want to clean up the cylinder really good. I have to put the bottom end back together um, and all that kind of good stuff. And then I can put the cylinder back on. I want to retime this thing with no base gasket, see what our squish is like, and then go from there. If I want to adjust the squish, we could do a video with the lathe. I'll cut the cylinder base, drop the cylinder down, and uh, um, we shouldn't have any problems with the cases matching. It's pretty straight in where where the cylinder touches the cases. But uh, And then we will do the exhaust port. I got a little bit of welding to finish on that pipe that we made. I'm going to paint it and weld it and do all that kind of stuff. And then we can put the saw back together and see how she's going to run. I'm really, really excited for this one. Good times. Thanks for hanging out in the saw shop. And uh, hope you guys learned something from this video. I'm always trying to get you guys those harder shots so that you guys can see and, and hopefully learn. This applies to dirt bikes, snowmobiles, chainsaws, any two-stroke you can do this kind of work to. Um, it's not always necessary. And remember, I'm increasing case capacity. Um, more case capacity will give me more upper end power, but that could mean I need to play with the reeds and that kind of thing, or intake timing if it was piston ported. Um, this saw might not be as snappy as it was stock, so we might have to play with things and get that hit back. So Bucking likes crack and pull. Crack, when you pull the trigger that saw lights up and pull, 
he wants that saw to cut at high RPM and just pull the living snot out of a chain. So um, that's what I aim for. That's the kind of saw that I like. So anyhow, friends, thanks for watching. Take it easy. Later.